Baseball is often called America's pastime, and it's mostly known for being a relaxed paced game that goes great with beer and hot dogs. But you know what else goes great with baseball? Science, that's right. Of course, any physical activity is going to have some physics behind it, and one of the more nuanced aspects of baseball to a non-fan is the physics of different pitches. The most well-known pitch is the fastball, but there are different variations on the theme. The most direct one is a four-seam fastball, where the fingers are placed across four seams. On release, the pitcher imparts backspin on the ball. The result is the ball doesn't drop as much as it would otherwise, appearing to fight gravity and travel in more of a straight line. The pitcher is taking advantage of the Magnus effect, which is when a spinning sphere affects the air pressure around it, much like an airplane wing. The side of the ball spinning with the direction of travel is essentially moving against the air faster, creating more drag, creating more pressure, and causing the air to push on it. On the opposite side of the ball, air pressure is reduced and the ball travels more easily in that direction. Curveballs take advantage of the Magnus effect more, but instead of stabilizing the flight into a straight line, the topspin causes it to drop and cut. Different grips and releases open up more possibilities, like sinkers, sliders, and change-ups, but they're all essentially doing the same thing, causing the seams to push air around and change the pressure on the ball. The exception to the rule is the knuckleball. A knuckleball is designed to spin only once in its flight. Moving through the air this way causes a Carmen Vortex Street, which is a string of vortices trailing alternating sides of the ball. The effect is the ball wobbles from side to side and its flight becomes impossible to predict. What makes the knuckleball dance so much? I think a, probably a physicist would be able to tell you more than me, but you know, the way that it looks like in the air is that when you throw a ball with no spin or like an eighth of a rotation forward, it looks like the seams are fighting to get to the other side of the baseball, so it creates a lot of movement. The, the wind resistance coming this way, the seams trying to fight against that, sends the ball in multiple directions from the time it leaves your hand to the time it gets to the plate. But again, I think a physicist would be able to tell you exactly why it does that. Clearly, the seams play a huge role in affecting the flight of the ball. The seams on balls the pros use are smoother than those used by college players to give them less of an advantage in grip. The lower seams also give the batter an advantage. Because of the reduced drag, a batter will hit the smoother ball farther. You'll also notice balls that get hit in the dirt and scuffed are tossed out by the umpires, because a skilled pitcher can use the scuff to their advantage. Mariana Rivera is one of the most dominant closers in history. But what may be most remarkable is that he has done it by confounding hitters with mostly one pitch, his signature cutter. John Flaherty of the Yes Network faced Rivera as a hitter and also caught him when he played for the Yankees. From a hitter's standpoint, he's out on the mound. It feels like he's not even putting any effort into it, and the ball explodes on you. And from a catching standpoint, uh, he's the easiest guy ever to catch because he throws the ball right where you want it. Rivera uses a seemingly effortless delivery, which he can flawlessly repeat pitch after pitch. His cutter is thrown very much like a fastball, but the pitch has significant lateral movement. He creates and adjusts this movement with the different pressure he puts on the ball with his fingers. The pitch's lateral movement keeps it off the bat's sweet spot, moving in on the hands of a left-handed batter and toward the end of the bat of a righty. To a hitter, Rivera's cutter first appears like a straight fastball, making it hard to distinguish the two pitches during the first fractions of a second when the hitter must decide if, when, and where to swing. Hitters often rely on reading a pitch's spin to determine what pitch is coming, but Rivera's fastball and cutter have what appear to the hitter as the same spin. Many pitchers throw their cutters more like sliders, with their fingers pulling down on the side of the ball. This can create more downward and lateral movement than a cutter, but it also creates the signature spin of a slider, a spinning red dot, that the hitter can recognize and adjust to. With identical deliveries and spins on Rivera's pitches, hitters are at a loss to identify and then attack the pitch, until it is too late and the balls end up in very different locations. Here are the nearly 1,300 pitches that Rivera threw in 2009, each frozen at the point when the batter must make his swing decisions. But with few clues to determine the pitch's ultimate location, the batter can be faced with guessing at these outcomes. He's got four or five different pitches that all come out of the same exact tunnel. The visual on all four or five of his pitches look like fastball and become something else. One way hitters identify a pitch is by gauging a pitcher's arm angle. Rivera's remarkably consistent arm slot, varying less than two degrees, helps disguise the type of pitch he's thrown. Another way hitters try to identify pitches is by spin. 
Rivera's four-seam fastball leaves his hand at 90-plus miles an hour, rotating at roughly 1,500 RPM along a vertical axis, adjusting his grip by a few millimeters, literally a stitch or two, and altering fingertip pressure, Rivera's cutter leaves his hand just as fast, but spins on a tilted axis at up to 1,600 RPM. Spin creates pressure differentials in the airflow on each side of a ball, and the ball curves toward the lower pressure zone. This phenomenon is known as the Magnus effect, and the faster the spin, the greater the curve. To a batter's eye, the spin and velocity of Rivera's cutter look like his standard fastball. But since hitters only have about 17 hundredths of a second to correctly identify a pitch, they're usually wrong. By the time Rivera's cutter reaches the plate, it's moved laterally up to eight inches. And the majority of that movement is in the last 10 feet of the ball's flight. At that point, the human eye is physically unable to actually see a ball traveling that fast. And even if a hitter makes contact, it's virtually impossible for him to get the roughly four inch sweet spot of the bat on the ball. We're here at the Gordon Dam, and what we're gonna do is demonstrate uh, from the very top the effect of spin on a ball. So we're gonna get a basketball and drop it uh, from 140 meters up. Uh, one without spin and one with spin, and see what happens. All right, you guys, good down the line. Let's get out of here. Thank you. We're watching. Ready? Yeah. How's the curve slow? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's crazy. We're just just dropping it with no spin or anything like that. And as you could see, you know, that the ball was sort of doing a sway thing. So it wasn't going directly straight. It was pretty hard to predict where it was falling. So that was really cool. Right, ready? Whoa, look at that go! <laughs> One to get back in the water, do you? This is Brett who just threw it. I literally just dropped it with a bit of spin, like I didn't even throw it, and it just took off. Like we had no idea that was going to do that. But yes, in the water. What makes the knuckleball dance so much? I think a, probably a physicist would be able to tell you more than me, but again, I think a physicist would be able to tell you exactly why it does that. I think a, probably a physicist would be able to tell you more than me. I think a physicist would be able to tell you exactly why it does that. 